I'm Mike, and in this episode, a little tidbit that the WHO missed. That dairy causes cancer too. We're gonna see that all of the research, the epidemiological studies, the mechanisms, the magnitude of effect that show that dairy causes cancer are just as robust as all of the supporting evidence that the WHO used to determine that processed meat causes cancer. How dare I say that something is cancer causing before the WHO? Well, if you've seen my five ways meat causes cancer video, you know that I actually released it before the WHO. So I like to think of myself as somewhat of a carcinogen tastemaker. No, I don't think that at all. Don't, that doesn't sound good. All right, let's jump right into prostate cancer, the most common cancer for men at 177,000 new cases in 2012 alone in the US. Before we get into the mechanism of how it's caused, let's look at some population studies. Remember, a hot dog a day with the processed meat increased colorectal cancer by 36%. The Physician's Health Study followed 20,000 men and found that those who ate greater than two and a half servings a day had a 34% increased risk of getting prostate cancer when compared to those that ate half or less a serving a day. Three servings a day? I'll keep that in mind, National Dairy Council. Also worth noting, two and a half servings is not much higher than the average intake, making it more commonly consumed than processed meat. All right, now moving on to this meta-analysis of 11 case control studies that found if you drink milk, you are 68% more likely to get prostate cancer than those who don't. But daily milk in and around puberty seems to be the worst. This study that followed 9,000 men found that drinking milk every day in adolescence leads to a 320% increased chance of getting prostate cancer. That sounds a lot like a USDA recommendation to me. Now for some population trends. In Japan, when they introduced dairy, prostate cancer rose dramatically. It went from virtually non-existent to 20 times higher. Conveniently, dairy consumption also increased by about 20 times. The same trend can be seen in this chart of prostate cancer and milk consumption across various countries. Yes, those last five studies were highlighting correlation, albeit extremely super ultra strong correlation, like, oh, my foot's bleeding after I shot it correlation. Similar studies highlighting a correlation were good enough for the WHO as supporting factors for causation, but they were also coupled with mechanisms. What are the mechanisms that dairy causes prostate cancer? Let's take a look. One way that dairy consumption can trigger prostate cancer is through excess calcium consumption. As this study shows, those who ate high levels of calcium had a 300% increased chance of getting prostate cancer. And excess calcium interferes with vitamin D levels, lowering them, and vitamin D is responsible for regulating the cell proliferation of your prostate. And what happens when you have excess cells growing that you don't want? Cancer. From the same study, quote, because dairy sources are the major source of calcium, their overall effect is to suppress vitamin D levels. And to bring it full circle back to the physician's health study that I mentioned earlier, they found that men with higher calcium consumption had lower levels of vitamin D. Now moving beyond just prostate cancer by looking at hormones. Estrogen is actually classified as a carcinogen by the National Institute of Health, and not just because of the way it affects hormone receptors to have excess estrogen, but also how it breaks down within the cell, releasing free radicals which break apart DNA and cause cancer. So excess estrogen is certainly bad. And from this study, quote, the daily intake of total investigated estrogens through milk is dramatically more than currently recognized. In fact, 60 to 80% of all dietary sex hormones, including estrogen, come from dairy products. It is really important to note that these are not just added hormones like RGBH, these are naturally occurring estrogens. During pregnancy, estrogen levels in milk reach 33 times higher than they normally are, and nowadays in commercial dairies, we keep cows pregnant 10 months out of the year. It's so bad that even if you drip organic milk on a petri dish with cancer, the cancer grows 30% faster. Well, if you take almond milk, it actually decreases growth by 30%. But wait, 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 that's milk directly on cancer. Doesn't digestion destroy the estrogens in milk? Wrong. Here's a study that gave milk to men, women, and children and found that after the intake of cow's milk, blood estrogen and progesterone concentration significantly increased and testosterone significantly decreased in men. This might explain why higher milk consumption lowers semen quality. 
And also from this study, lower testosterone levels are associated with higher risk of prostate cancer as well as a worse outcome when you do have prostate cancer. Now let's move on to female cancers. Here is a Swedish study that followed 61,000 women and found that those who drank the most milk had twice as much serous ovarian cancer or the most common type of ovarian cancers as those who drank the least, showing a stepwise increase in that cancer for lactose consumption. In addition to the obvious effect of increased estrogen after drinking milk, Lactose's cousin, galactose, has been shown to be toxic to oocytes or premature egg cells. And that raise in estrogen can be a concern for breast cancer as well. From this study, quote, Overall, women with the highest one-third of estradiol levels had a 2.07-fold increase in breast cancer compared with those with the lowest levels. Also, higher estrogen levels triggers premature or precocious puberty, which is a really important factor because every year that you can delay puberty, you get a 7% decreased chance of getting breast cancer later on. Now, epidemiological studies don't see the same stepwise increase in breast cancer with milk consumption as you see with, say, prostate cancer or ovarian cancer, but you do see an increase between no milk consumption and milk consumption at all. As this study mentions, we see a reduced incidence of breast cancer in women who are lactose intolerant. In order to really get a good idea of this, though, we need a population that encompasses a dairy-consuming subset and a non-dairy-consuming subset. The Adventist study did exactly that. They found that the vegetarian women, when compared to the omnivorous women, had about the same level of all female cancers, including breast and ovarian cancers, but when you compare vegan people to them, vegans had a 35% decreased chance of getting all female cancers. Same population, the only difference is dairy and eggs. And what would you do for a one-third decreased risk of getting breast cancer? Well, veganism is extreme though, so. Now, I don't wanna go deeply into soy here, but I really wanna mention it quickly because I know there's gonna be 10 comments about phytoestrogens in soy and probably cause cancer, because no. Here is a study, a meta-analysis of eight studies showing that those who ate the most soy compared to those who ate the least had a 30% reduction in breast cancer. Now let's move on from sex hormones to growth hormones. IGF-1 or insulin-like growth factor 1 is a growth hormone that the WHO found to be an important factor in determining that processed meat and meat is carcinogenic. Like other hormones, is not a problem until it becomes out of balance. And IGF-1 is basically cancer fuel. It helps start cancer, grow cancer, and spread it into the bone and throughout the body. The connection between IGF-1 and cancer can be illustrated with giantism and dwarfism. People with Laron syndrome, a type of dwarfism where they have really low levels of IGF-1, and here are their IGF-1 levels compared to their relatives, have extremely low levels of cancer, 1 17th that of their relatives and they virtually never die from it. But looking at people with acromegaly, a type of giantism, they have an increased level of IGF-1 and an increased chance of getting cancer. And here's the kicker. Animal protein boosts blood levels of IGF-1. As this study showed, animal protein in general increases IGF-1 while plant protein in general decreases IGF-1. But what about dairy or milk in particular? This study showed that milk raises blood IGF-1 levels by 10%. Do you want 10% more cancer fuel in your body? I don't think so. This explains why omnivores and vegetarians have elevated levels of IGF-1, while vegans do not. In the end, if IGF-1 is a good enough supporting factor for the WHO to determine that processed meat causes cancer, then that should also be the case for dairy. In conclusion, there is as much research supporting the causality between dairy and cancer as there is between processed meat and cancer. When looking at colorectal cancer and prostate cancer, you see that moderate consumption of both dairy and processed meat give you about a 35% increase of getting their respective cancer. And don't forget that by following the recommendations of having daily milk consumption as an adolescent, you get a 300% increased chance of getting prostate cancer later on. Also, don't forget about the undeniable raise in IGF-1 that you get within your blood after drinking milk or eating animal protein, as well as the manipulations of hormones like raising estrogen levels and lowering testosterone levels that you get after drinking milk, both of which are associated with various reproductive cancers. It is unclear whether or not the WHO has analyzed the cancer-causing potential of dairy or not yet, but I would not be surprised if in the next year or so it adds it to the list right there next to processed meat. 
All right, that's it. If you liked what you saw, like it so more people saw it. Also, comment down below. Really curious to see what you guys have to say about this. And thank you for watching. The Physician's Health Study, they found that women... They didn't find any women. It was a man's study. <laughs>